Hi everyone, welcome to Java Techie. In this tutorial, you will understand how to connect your Spring Boot project with MongoDB Atlas and also we will perform one CRUD operation using MongoDB Atlas. Okay, alright. Basically, MongoDB Atlas is database as a service which offers you if you are using MongoDB Atlas trial version then by default you will get 512 MB of storage and you will also get the feature called monitoring and alerting then you can improve the performance of your query by using performance optimization tools and all the data is in the form of end-to-end -end encryption and the last feature is data visualization with atlas charts okay when i say data visualization you can visualize your data in the form of charts and graph if you are using this mongodb atlas okay and this all the features what we discuss is available any of the mongodb atlas even though you are using the trial version or enterprise version but in future if you want to extend above features then you can upgrade to the large cluster and the main advantages here since this product is hosted to the cloud infrastructure you can easily scale up and scale down as per your need when i say scale up and scale down it means simply you can consider the configuration to access this mongodb atlas is very simple directly go to the mongodb atlas user interface then play with your configuration do the changes whatever you need as part of your requirement okay so i found this specific mongodb atlas product is really cool because it is giving option to you to choose the cloud infrastructure what you want to use whether you want to use the aws cloud or azure cloud or google cloud it is up to you okay so isn't it cool guys so without any further delay let's quickly demonstrate this in action let's get started So before we start developing the code, first you need to set up your MongoDB Atlas cluster. So for that go to the browser and then search for MongoDB Atlas. Then the first link is the official page of MongoDB Atlas. So just click on that. Once you click on it will redirect you to the sign up page. You can see here this is the sign up page. If you already have the account you can click on this sign in or else if you want you can directly sign up using the Google. Okay. So for simplicity let me play with the sign up form so i'll give the first name as basant name something like last name hota company i will give java Tiki is my company name email you can give uh, let me give java Tiki for you at the red gmail.com then password you can set anything okay i'll just set something okay now agree the term and service create your atlas account next immediately you will get an verification email to the email id which you used as part of the registration then just go to that email id and you need to verify verify your email address okay so let's put it to load you can see here i received this email id so i'll click on verify email then you can see here the email successfully verified click on the continue and it will redirect to this atlas home page here you can see the option right you have option to set up your information so the first option what is your goal today so i just want to learn the mongodb you can choose appropriate to your requirement so for now i will choose the learn mongodb what type of application are you building i will choose microservices okay what is your preferred language for now i have using java now click on finish and if you observe here, there is something called serverless MongoDB Atlas, dedicated MongoDB Atlas and shared MongoDB Atlas. Okay. So these two are chargeable. You need to give your debit card or credit card to activate it. And But this is the free one. Okay. So I am going with the free approach, which is the shared MongoDB Atlas. So just click on this create. Now you can see option here, create a shared cluster. So I'm not going to use the serverless and dedicated because I want to trial the free MongoDB Atlas, which is the shared. So I click on this. Next, you can see here the option you found here. Choose your cloud provider and region. Whether you want to use the AWS or Google Cloud or Azure, it is up to you. 
So just click one of the cloud provider. For now, I will choose the AWS. Then you will have the option to choose the region. But I will go with the default, which is AWS Mumbai AP South. So I will ignore it. So this is the cluster tier. So this is the default configuration. So leave it. We don't want to change anything. Then additional setting. Nothing I want to do for now. This is again the default thing. Then next I will change my cluster name. Okay. This is also optional, but let's keep a valid cluster name. Java Techie. Okay. Now click on the create cluster. So you need to validate this. You need to choose this. Let me add it. Fine. So click on next. I don't know. Okay. Just choose this. Fine. Then it will create the cluster. Now it is asking about your security quick start. How do you like to authenticate your connection? I want to authenticate using username and password. So give the username. So I will give the username as admin and password also I will keep as admin. Okay, you can give your username and password. You can add n number of users to access this MongoDB Atlas. But for now, let me create one user with name admin and password admin. Click on create user. You can see here, this is what your user. Now, where would you like to connect from? So my local environment, then add entries to your IP access list. Give my current IP here. Finish and close. Go to the database. It will take few seconds to create your DV instance. You can see here, this is our database deployment and this is my cluster name. Fine. And since we are using the trial version, it is asking me to upgrade, but we'll go with the trial only. And if you click on this connect, this is where you will get your data source information. Okay. Now you will choose this connect your application. This is what your data source URI or URL, whatever you can consider. Using this, your Spring Boot application can connect to the MongoDB Atlas, which is hosted to the AWS cloud infrastructure. Okay. So you need to copy this for your future reference. So let me copy this. This is my URI. Okay, or URL, database URL. And I want to create the database and collection through the application. So we'll add as part of the document. Okay, so we are done with our database setup in MongoDB Atlas. Now just go to your IntelliJ IDEA. Then let's quickly create a new Spring Boot project. Click on File, New Project. So click on Next. Give the group ID com.javatiki. Then I will give the artifact ID, let's say Spring Boot Mongo Atlas. Fine, I will choose the JDK to 8 and I will keep the package as com.javatiki. Now click on next. Then let's add the required dependency. I will add Lombok. I will add web dependency, Spring Web because we are going to perform the crowd operation and I want to expose the endpoint so that I can show you the crowd how it is working, right? Then next, I will use the Mongo dependency, right? Spring Data Mongo. That's it. Click on the next. Click on the finish. So project imported successfully and there is a spelling mistake. So let me correct it. Fine. Okay. Now what I need to do, I will create the couple of package. So I will create a package called model or entity or document, whatever is compatible for you. So you can create that package. Let me name it model. Okay. The next, let me create a package called service. Then you can create a package called controller. Fine. That's it, right? Let me create a model. New Java class. I'll give the model name, let's say task. Fine. So let me zoom this. So I'll add the couple of field here. Private string task ID. Private string description of the task. Next, I can add something like private int severity of that task 
ओके नेक्स्ट यू कैन ऐड समथिंग लाइक प्राइवेट स्ट्रिंग टू हूम दिस टास्क इज असाइन असाइनी देन यू कैन ऐड द स्टोरी पॉइंट ऑफ दैट टास्क ओके प्राइवेट स्ट्रिंग और इंट राइट इंट स्टोरी पॉइंट ऑफ द टास्क सो इट इज अप टू यू यू कैन प्ले विथ सम डिफरेंट एलिमेंट और डॉक्यूमेंट लाइक एम्प्लॉय ऑर्ड और समथिंग लाइक दैट बट आई यूज द टास्क एज ए डॉक्यूमेंट सिंस आई एम यूजिंग द मंगो हिच इज ए नो सिक्वल डीवी राइट आई नीड टू स्टोर दिस एज ए डॉक्यूमेंट सो फर्स्ट आई नीड टू अनोटेड हियर एट द रेट डॉक्यूमेंट देन आई नीड टू गिव माई कलेक्शन नेम इट इज अप टू यू इफ यू डोंट गिव एनी कलेक्शन नेम नेम बाय डिफॉल्ट इट विल टेक योर कलेक्शन नेम एज योर क्लास नेम सो इट्स गुड प्रैक्टिस टू कीप योर कलेक्शन नेम एज टैक्स ओके सिंस आई यूज द लम्बो आई कैन यूज द डी ए टी ए डेटा एनोटेशन ऑल आर्गुमेंट कंस्ट्रक्टर आई वांट नो आर्गुमेंट कंस्ट्रक्टर दैट्स इट ओके सो सिंस आई नीड टू डिफाइन वन एज ए प्राइमेरी की आई विल चूज दिस टास्क आई डी एज ए प्राइमेरी की I just need to annotate your at the rate ID and make sure this ID should be import from org dot spring framework dot data, not from the Java persistence. Okay, fine. So I'm done with my entity, or you can consider as a document with five field: task ID, description, severity, assign, and story point. Now next, let me create a repository. So let me create a new package called repository. Then I'll create a interface here let's say task repository this should be interface now this interface i need to extends from mongo repository okay so you can use the jpa but since this is the no sql we need to go with the mongo repository or else you can extend from the crowd repository so here the first argument should be your document or entity you can say task then next data type of the primary key which is string okay this is my uh, repository so we are good with entity and repository now let me create the service class java class let me name it task service let me zoom this so i need to annotate this with annotation at the rate service then i need to inject repository inside this service right so i will use private task repository and i will inject using auto add next i will write the crowd operation when i say crowd operation it will be create read from the dv update in the dv and delete from the dv that is what the crowd mean right create read update and delete so we'll perform these four operations so first let's go with the create i mean i want to save some task document to the mongodb atlas so i'll write a method public who will return me the task object which i'm going to save okay save task or add task something like that then give the task object as a argument then simply since i injected the repo i can directly call repository dot save and give the entity when i say entity in no sql it will be the document right so just give that object and before save that since if you observe in the task i created this as a task id but in mongo the id can't be auto generated directly okay you need to write some additional logic but for now let me set some value for the task id so what i'll do i'll do something like task dot set task id and i will use something like uid dot random uid dot convert it to the string then i will split it and i will get the first index some random alphanumeric value i will get okay and then i'm going to save it once it will save it will return me the task object so i'll simply return that similarly let's try the next operation which is read right so we want to read the object or document from the mongodb atlas so what i'll do i will write a method who will return me the list of task object from the mongodb so i'll write task 
um, then I just need to write a method something like find all tasks okay then I can directly use the repository dot find all method okay so if I call the find all method it will give me all the task object or all the task document from the MongoDB so I will simply return that okay next you can also search a task document by any of the field okay so this is where we fetch all the task document from the MongoDB now you can write a single method to fetch a single task document from MongoDB by any field when I say any field you can go to the task document and you can either fetch with the task ID severity assign or story point it is up to you okay so first let's try with this task ID then we'll try with the severity or any other field so let me go to the service then I will write a method here public who will return me the single task object so task by ID right I'll write get task by task ID and I need to give this task ID then the method is very simple in repository you can simply return repository dot find by is the prefix and then next based on which field you want to do the operation or you want to do the filter you need to give that field okay for now we want to fetch using the id so i can use the find by id and i need to pass this task id it will return me the optional so i need to get it okay fine now let's say you want to search by severity okay so i'll show you how you can write the method it is not specific to the mongodb any of the spring data implementation if you are using this is how you can design your method rather than writing the query you can design your method okay so let's say i'll write a method who will return me the task document and i want to get the task by severity okay so there may be a multiple task for the for a specific severity so i will return the list of task fine now here i need to give severity which is int now here you need to understand how you can write the method so that it will convert to the query okay when i say it will convert to the query you no need to write the any query if you are using any implementation of spring data so how i can do that i will write return repository as i mentioned before find by should be your prefix then based on which field you want to do the filter this is what the field right just pass that name variable name make sure you need to give the correct value what you defined in your document or entity now once you give that make sure to make it camel case so find by is the prefix and then based on which field you want to perform the operation you need to give that field so let's say you want to search with multiple field then give and and then what is your next field you want to search let's say story point right you need to give like this make sure to make the first char as a capital then you can create this method and you can here also you can pass the story point but let's make it simple we'll try with one single field which is severity now i need to pass the severity here and this method is not exist in our repo right we need to create create this method so just create this method inside your repo that's it now spring data is smart enough to understand okay this guy want to find the object based on the return type and he want to perform the filter based on this particular field and this particular field is exist in this entity right so that is how he can able to execute this method as a select star from this table where severity equal to this okay now if we we'll go and check task service we write our own method to use this prefix find by then based on the field now we might have a question hey can't i write the query for this particular scenario so yeah you can write the query so let me write another method let's say i'll i'll write the same operation based on severity or let's try with the different okay public who will return me the list of task okay 
get the task by what else field we have let's say assign okay so go to the service get task by assigning then i'll give the assign name now next what you can do i could write the method the way i write here find by severity i can write a method find by assign right but i want to write the query so what i can do i'll write something like this or i'll directly write from the repo then i'll come back to the service so method will return me the list of task okay and you can give any name method here okay method name you can specify anything because we are not following the syntax of spring data we are going to follow or we are going to write our own query okay so i'll write something like get tax by assigning you can give this field now you can write the query here so make sure to annotate at the red query and then based on which field you want to filter just give that field with the index parameter so you can write something like this the field name is assignee right and this is my first parameter so you can format it i will write like this okay now let's say if you want to pass the second argument then just add a comma give the field name or variable name then specify the index parameter okay and if you want if you want to add further then specify the index parameter okay that's fine so we, we want to try with the single parameter fine so now go to the task service simply call this method return repository dot get task by assignee pass this assignee as a argument fine so we have written the we tried the create read now let's write the update method so let me write a method public after update i am expecting to get the task object with the updated value so i will return the task now i will just define update task okay now i'll just give the task object which i want to update task i'll better i'll keep the name as task request fine now to update anything first we need to get that value from the db then we can apply the updated value right so i'll write the step get the existing document from db populate new value from request to existing object or you can type entity or you can type document okay so first let me get the existing object from the db by task id because task id i am going to pass as part of the request you can keep a separate parameter as well let's say string task id but since i am giving the object as part of argument i will keep the input here okay so i don't want to keep another field so what i'll do i will simply call repo dot find by id give the task id i will get it from the request dot get task id it will return me the task object from the db which is already exist with this id so i will capture that so i'll name it existing task okay now whatever the new value i will pass as part of this request those value i will update in this object which is there in my db okay so let's say existing task dot set id i don't want to change because anyway if you want to perform any update operation you should not touch your id because this is the unique field based on this field we want to perform the op uh, update operation okay so i'll just add other field get it from request task request dot get description similarly existing task dot set severity get it from the request task request dot get severity 
existing task dot set uh, what is that story point uh, okay assign it get it from the request now the last field existing task dot set story point get it from the request fine so here i have only four field so i am directly getting from the request and setting to the db but if you have multiple field better to use some wrapper mechanism or you can use the map struct or any other object mapper anything you can use there okay so this is just four object or four attribute i want to set so i did it manually now there is no update method available in the crowd repository or mongo or jpa or you can consider as part of the spring data there is no update operation directly so you need to call the save operation so what we did we get the existing object from the db and we update that existing object which is there in my db with the new value then i will save that new value okay return repository dot save give the existing object which we modified with the new value okay that's it about the update next um, if you will observe here we are done with the update next we will write the delete so for delete i'll write a method public who will return me some string let's say delete task then i'll give the some some field okay i'll give int sorry string task id fine then simply i will call repository dot delete by id and give the id if you observe the return type of this method is void you can see here right so i will return some string here return task deleted from dashboard or something like that okay i will give the task id here fine so we are done with the service we tried the crowd scenario create and read with multiple scenario then update and delete so we write the service now let's jump to the controller class and let's create it okay so i will just create a class now java class let's say task controller then let me zoom this i need to annotate here at the right rest controller then i need to define the root url i'll define something like this then i will call each and every method from the service so i will just inject it because from the controller i want to use the service so i need to inject that otherwise i cannot access it i will just simply name it service inject using auto add fine then next write the endpoint so i will write for create public will return me the task create task i need to give the task as a input from the postman so i'll give task as a argument then i need to annotate here at the right request body because i will pass this value from the postman so that that json will be convert to this object using jackson data bind then simply since i have the task object from the postman i can call return service dot add task and give the task object okay since here i am going to give the request and um, this is what i want to create the resource so i need to annotate here at the red post mapping okay and if you want you can also use the response status uh, let's say created okay next i'll write okay let's check the service we write for add task now let me write for find all task okay better i will copy this syntax go to the controller copy this method name i'll change the method name get tasks i'll simply call the service method right service dot find all task okay so here i don't have any input simply i want to fetch it from the db i will annotate here get mapping now let's go to the service the next method we want to get the task by id so i'll simply copy this go to the task controller i will paste it i'll change the method name get task because this will give me the single task object 
so rather than call the repo from controller i will call the service service dot get task by id get task by task id and i'll give the task id okay so again here i am giving one single parameter i will annotate your get mapping and this parameter i want to pass as part of the request url so i'll use the path variable okay and i need to append that as part of the url so i'll define like this because i want to append the task id as part of the request url fine next let's go to the second method which is get task by severity so simply i will copy this method then go to the controller just paste it okay i will just keep the method name get task with or uh, find task okay find task using severity and i will give this severity now here i will call the service method service get task by this okay just pass the severity here also what i will do i will simply use the get mapping and i also use the path variable okay so i'll just annotate here at the red path variable and this field i will pass as a severity i'll just append this as a url now you need to fire task slash severity then give the uh, severity it will give you the list of tasks okay now let's check the next method so the next method get task by assignee this is where we write our custom query okay so simply i will copy this method you can write it to save our time i am just doing the copy paste okay better let me try for one okay public will return me the list of task get task by severity not assign right give the assign value as a input then simply i will call return service dot get task by not this one service get task by assignee okay and give the assignee value now here this again i need to pass as part of the request variable or request url so i will use the path variable annotation then this is also get mapping and you need to define your url let's say this is assignee so just change the url assignee and give this value dynamically okay so we are done with the get and create now we'll write for the update and delete so i'll write a method public will update the task and return it to me so i'll write a method update task or modify task okay then give the task as a request and since this is again i am giving the object i need to annotate here at the red request body and since i want to update the resource in my db i need to annotate here put mapping okay this is what the http standard if you want to create use the post mapping if you want to update use the put mapping and then that's it i don't want to give any url okay because this annotation is different in put mapping and in post mapping here so there is no confusion you can access with this with the same url okay because the http method is different so i will simply call return service dot update task and give the task now next we'll write for the delete public it will return the string right delete task give the id which is string task id then simply i will call return service dot delete task give the task id since i want to delete the resource i need to use the http method here delete mapping okay and this i want to pass as part of the request url i will use path variable and you need to give the url here fine okay so if you observe here there is one interesting part 
here I use at the delete mapping and I am giving this URL. But if you observe here, I am writing one get mapping and I am giving the same URL. So there is no confusion. Even you are giving the same URL, the HTTP method is different. Here it is get, here it is delete. So there is no confusion from the controller. He will understand based on your HTTP method. Okay. So we are good. So we write our controller service entity and repo. But if you remember, we created the account in MongoDB Atlas, which is there in cloud. And we need to get the data source information, right? Already I believe we copied it. If not, you can simply connect your application and copy this uh, URL, which is your MongoDB database URL. So you need to configure that. Otherwise, how your application will connect to this data source, right? So what you can do, go to the project and then simply create one YML file. Even you can use the application.properties, but let me use the YML file application.yml. Okay. Then specify the data source URI and name of your database. Okay. So I will use spring. It's not auto suggesting. Okay. I will, I will write it spring data mongo then uri okay and you need to give this uri which we copied right or just we copied right that i can give here now make sure to change the this is what your username right and this is what your cluster name make sure to give your password for i set admin okay while create the user i give the username as admin and password as admin so i am giving the same but if you keep your own username and password make sure to give that otherwise this is what the mongodb atlas url which is hosted in aws cloud okay so you need to give it properly fine next simply just give the database name okay database which is task you can give any name since my document or entity i created with task so it's good to keep the same name, but you can give any name here. Okay, that is fine. We specify the URI where my MongoDB is located. This is what will work as a data source for your Mongo. And this is what your name of your database. Fine. Now we are good with the classes and methods. So we'll simply run our application. Just go to the main class. Just run it. It will take few seconds. It seems there is some exception. So what is that? Okay. Okay. Let me check here. The connect, then connect to your application. Zero EV8, right? So let's verify in the application dot ML. 0ve8 and username admin admin okay we did a mistake here this should be mongodb not mongo okay spring data mongodb then give the uri and database so i believe we are good let me rerun this so you can observe here right started on port 8080 and it connected to this okay there are some connection related stuff printed over the console um, let's not focus on that now let's verify our endpoint okay so go to the controller class the url is last task and first is created task and give the task object so task id will be auto generated since we are using uuid in the service these are the four fields you need to pass description, severity, assignee, and story point. So just go to the postman. This is what my URL TASKS, and these are the field I need to give, right? Description, severity, assignee, and story point. So let me send the request. We are getting the response. Now let me uh, add some different thing here okay for description let's say logging stuff 
and severity let's say 3 assign is basandota story point is 1 send the request fine now let me add something like um, some different task okay um, what i can say let me add something like um, add cron expression to refresh okay let's say severity is 3 and i will change the assign it to let's say someone else um, anything asic okay story point is 2 now let me send the request it is added right now if i'll go and verify in my database let me close this let me zoom this so there is an option called browse your collection okay so just click on this browse collection can you see here this is what the collection name we created right and this is what my database name and we are getting here task is my database this is what my collection and we added the three entry three object or three document we are able to see here right implemented security then severity whatever the field we added we can see here now let's simply do all the gate call so we are we are successfully did this right and since we added the created let me check what are the status we are getting we are getting 201 created correct now let's check the all the tasks from DV. so the endpoint is same slash task right i will simply copy this directly i will search in my browser so that i can uh, show in the correct format can you see here we are getting these three object so severity three right and one so let's check the next endpoint we are able to fetch all the endpoint next endpoint to get the task by task id so let me copy one of the task id then we'll filter that let's say this okay let me copy this now simply add that as part of url we are able to see the value here this is the task ID, this is what the description, severity, assignee and story point. Now let's check the next endpoint. Get the task by severity. We will get the list of tasks. If you observe, we have the two tasks added. Let me verify. Let me go to the cloud. Severity is one here. These two tasks having the same severity. Okay. So I should get the list of tasks, these two. Now let me check with that let's say severity let me verify the url severity then severity count right give the url severity then i will give three i should get two object i am able to let me zoom this can you see here we are getting two object here both are having the same severity this is what we write our custom method right get task by severity from service and in repo we created our own method by following the spring data prefix find by is the prefix and based on the field fine next this is what we write our own query to fetch list of tasks by assigning so let's verify in the dv so there is two tasks assigned to this guy basantota so i'll filter with this assignee so what i'll do i'll copy this name then simply go to the url remove this add the url give the name it seems there is some error so let's check the console json reader was expecting a name but found end of the file and it is there on the service okay if i will check the repo assign oh okay we, di we did a mistake we missed one um, curly braces here we need to close it okay so while uh, editing it like when i explained with the multi-parameter so i wrongly removed it fine then we are good let me read on this so it started now go to the chrome browser and let me refresh this can you see here with the name assign this guy we are having two document and we are getting it and this particular method is executed 
using the query which we written in our um, repo class okay so you are good with create an all type of get api or retrieving the document from the dv now let's try out the update okay which is put mapping so i need to give the task request i need to update something okay let's say go to the dv we'll update something okay instead of this logging stuff we'll add something like okay we'll, we'll change the description and then what else we can change L let's change this guy okay so first let me get this object i'll go to the browser and simply i will call this i'll get this object then i will simply copy this because i want to update this description so just go to the postman and then i will just change it so make sure you need to give the valid id and this id should be non editable user should not have permission to update the id because this is what the unique field based on that field we are getting the object from the dv okay so i will just add the or i'll just change the description enhance logging framework okay and let it be severity and assignee let it be or i will change the story point to uh, let's say 3 okay then i need to change it to the put right i want to update now send the request it's getting update and we are getting the response now let's verify in the dv go to the dv simply i need to refresh it i believe or i'll just click on different tab and i'll go back to my database go to the database browse collection since i zoom it i didn't search the refresh tab but there should be some refresh tab okay i didn't find here but it's fine can you see here this is what we changed right description we changed and story point we increased to the three initially it was one so update is also working as expected now the last one is the delete fine so what i will do i will just delete one object from the dv let's say i want to delete this first object copy the id then go to the postman task then give the id which you want to delete change the method type to delete this body is not required simply just delete it this task deleted from dashboard now if you'll just call the api to fetch all the object all the document from the dv you can see only two is present now okay first object or first document we simply deleted now the count is two same if you can verify in the dv let me refresh this i guess so if you'll scroll down there is only two document present and let me minimize this so that i can check other features so you can see here visualize your data you can visualize in different form um, or in the form of charts so you can explore more if you want to play with this particular mongodb atlas just create a cluster and play with its user interface here you can see something called real time metrics somewhere i search the graph of my data but i'm not getting it now there is something the request you trigger to this dv view monitoring and alerting everything you can do here okay this is what the monitoring tool to verify the memory uses and all the stuff specific to the uh, mongodb atlas so this is just simple okay rather than install mongodb on my local machine i use the mongodb cloud version which is the mongodb atlas okay which is hosted to the aws cloud if you remember while create the or while create the cluster i choose the cloud provider as aws if you have account on azure it's fine if you don't have account also it's fine if you want to choose azure or google cloud you can play with them okay this is what the user interface there are so many features you can also set the triggers and you can also set the network accessibility you can make it private public you can make it shared everything you can do okay so i would strongly suggest you to create one cluster in mongodb atlas then play with this user interface you'll get lot of things to learn okay and this is the simple application we designed 
to perform a CRUD operation, create, read, update and delete using Spring Boot and MongoDB Atlas. If you have any doubt, do let me know in a comment section. That's all about this particular video guys. Thanks for watching this video. Meet you soon with a new concept.